We're doing some work on this um, Wild Axe camper van here. We're putting a lithium battery in, and I've got something to show you that I think you might find interesting. Watch this. So here we have the display, which is connected to the lithium battery. At the moment, the engine's not running. But in a minute, when Damien turns it on, turn it on. This is what is going into the battery. To start off with, nothing at all. We'll wait a few seconds. There we go. 6, 10.9, 14.8 amps, 15 amps, 16 amps. Looking pretty good. 17. Right, now. So we're getting about 15, 16, 17 amps going in. This is using the original vehicle wiring. Damien, do you want to turn on the fridge? So Damien's now turned on the fridge and the charge going into the battery has dropped to 5 amps. And it's not picking up. So this is why you need a battery to battery charger. And we'll show you what happens with the battery charging after we've installed new wiring and the battery to battery charger. In the basic vehicle this is the control box, by the way. The charge coming from the starter battery, or from the alternator originally, to the leisure battery is controlled by the relay. Damien, can you just point that out? Right, and just, Damien, explain what the relay is and what it does. Well, the relay is a switch that passes the, the charge from the starter battery into, into the lithium. Yeah. The it's into hit, the leisure into battery. Into the leisure battery. Yeah. And it's rated at? The maximum is 70 amps. Right. But it's, it won't actually pass 70 amps through, will it? No. Because? Because of the gauge of the cable. So the gauge of the cable limits the amount of current that can pass through. And that's why you just don't get enough to charge the battery properly. And of course the other thing is the relay is not a battery charger. No, it's just a switch. It's just a switch. So it's not charging the battery in the way that a battery likes to be charged. Yeah? Yeah. And so that's why it's so important to actually install a lithium battery properly. And even a lead acid battery, if you uh, want it to charge really well, as well as it would if it was connected to a mains charger, you would use a battery to battery charger. Battery to battery charger, yeah. yes. OK, well, you carry on with the job and we'll have a look at what happens after you've changed the wiring and installed a battery to battery charger. So, this is about a couple of hours later and Damien has installed um, additional wiring into the van and a battery to battery charger. What else? Anything else? Uh, a battery to battery charger. I said that. Yeah. Regulator, and solar a regu regulator. New solar regulator. Anyway, so what we're going to do now is start the engine up and you're going to see what difference having that additional wiring, higher grade, thicker cabling, plus the battery to battery charger, makes to what goes into the battery. Stand by. Okay, starter up, Damien. Right, so before, with the original wiring and no battery to battery charger, the battery was charging at 15, 16, 17 amps. Uh, when we turned the fridge on, it went down to, what was it, 5, 6 amps. Okay, so we're charging at 50 amps now. Uh, is the fridge on? And the fridge is on as well. The fridge is on. What happens if you turn the fridge off? It still stays up to stays, 50, stays 50, the same. 50, yeah. So even with the fridge running, we're now charging at almost 50 amps. Um, and without the battery to battery charger, without the additional cabling, we were charging oh, at just 5 amps. So, 10 times faster charging by installing the lithium battery correctly. Of course, having a lithium battery without this additional equipment is a good idea as well, but you won't get 
this huge benefit of fast charging without the battery to battery charger and the additional cable. Right, and using this clamp meter, you can now see how much the fridge is using when it's switched on. It's off now. Can we turn her on, please, Damien? Right. So there you go, the fridge is using 16 amps, which is a lot of current. And yet, the, uh, the battery is still charging at 50 amps. So there you go. Oh, just one more thing. Here's the cable. Oh, there's the new cable we installed at 16 mil. The original cable was about 10 mil. This is going to carry 50% more current and also reduce voltage drop, which is always a good thing. And then we have the battery. The battery charger just fits in here. It's not terribly big, as you can see. It's not big at all. But that is a 50 amp battery to battery charger. And then we've installed also a little 600 watt NDS inverter underneath so that the chap who owns this camper van can charge the batteries on his electric bike, amongst other things. So all in all, it's a neat little insulation, nothing too big, but it's absolutely critically critical that it's done properly. And as usual, Damien's done it properly. Proof that having a battery battery charger and correct wiring and a lithium battery is fantastic. <laughs> Isn't that right, Damien? Absolutely. Absolutely. Absolutely.